Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci fi. If you love to read, this is the podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Hello and welcome to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Sarah. I am excited to be with you once again. Hope you're having a great Tuesday. Hope you had a good weekend. Um, I had a good weekend. My husband and I took the dogs and, you know, our little celebrity traveling dogs. <laughs> Seriously, they get so much attention. Um <laughs> It's, it's it makes me laugh. I know I've said this before, but they just it makes me laugh how much attention they get here. But we took them to a couple of small villages uh, along the southwest coast of Portugal this past weekend and did a little exploring. Um, oh my gosh, so beautiful! I spent all of Friday afternoon just walking around, going, "This is so beautiful! This is so beautiful! This is so beautiful!" Like everywhere I turned, it was just so beautiful. Um, which really, really helped. Um, I needed some calm zen for this weekend. Um, I needed to take some time to breathe deeply and look at the beautiful scenery. So I was very grateful that I was able to do so. That was Friday. Saturday, we explored a little fishing village um, as well as a larger town, a much larger town near where we live. Um, And yeah, it was just, it was a gorgeous weekend and I cannot complain uh, about the scenery that I got to experience. So um, hope that you had a good weekend as well. But of course, we are here to talk about books and do an author interview. My um, author today is uh, Veronica Gutierrez. We are talking about her debut novel. It is called As You Look. Uh, It is mystery. It is um, suspense. Let me give you the description of this book. Former LAPD cop turned private investigator Yolanda Avila blames herself for her mother's death. If only she'd followed her cop instincts instead of the juju her random prophetic dreams. The perpetrator would have been off the streets and her mother would still be alive. The only salve against her guilt is Yolanda's vow to reject that juju crap and to solve cases using only good, solid detective work. But when her godson is kidnapped and his parents are suspected of murder, Yolanda finds herself caught between what she feels and what she knows. And with the escalation of the case comes the escalation of her dreams until she she can no longer ignore their importance. If she wants to overcome the guilt and deal with her pent-up grief, Yolanda must confront the juju and learn to trust its place in her life. If she doesn't, she risks losing yet another loved one, and she can't possibly let that happen. Okay, so that is the description of the book, and from a reader perspective, I love the last sentence in that first paragraph. The only salve against her guilt is Yolanda's vow to reject that juju crap and to solve cases using only good, solid detective work. I could have stopped the description right then and there, and you, as the readers that you are, would have known that, of course, she's not going to be able to reject that juju crap, that she is going to have to rely on it. And, of course, that is what happens. Um, so that's a, that's an interesting layer, I thought, in this, um, in this story. Not only, um, I mean... I'm not calling it juju crap because it's not, but uh, prophetic dreams. She has these dreams, but it's also, uh, if you want to go more basic as to what it is, it's really she has to learn to rely on her instincts as well as her um, her solid detective work, right? She has to learn to trust her instincts and herself. In this case, it's those prophetic dreams. Um, so I appreciated that layer of this book. I also appreciated the relationships in this book. Oftentimes when we have private detectives um, or private investigators, whether male or female, they are, you know, flawed as everyone is, but often they have really difficult relationships. They might be divorced or have a strained relationship with a spouse. They might have strained relationships with um, parents, especially female 
private investigators often have a complicated relationship with a father, uh, at least in the books that I've read. And that's obviously and not um, comprehensive. I haven't read every female private investigator there is. But um, Yolanda is not only a strong woman, um, a strong character, but she also has these great, strong, supportive relationships. She has a healthy relationship with her wife, who is supportive and um, helps her in every way she can, not only with um, the guilt she feels over her mother's death, but also with the prophetic dreams. She has a good relationship with her father and her brother, and they also are supportive of her and her work, and her brother has some of the same kinds of prophetic um, abilities, if you will. So I, I just really found that refreshing. Not every private investigator has to have screwed up relationships although that is you know it's it's a theme for a reason and I'm not saying that that's a bad thing but uh, I just appreciated it. it was a strong woman with a good strong relationships and I appreciated that and of course there's also the relationship that she has with her godson's parents and family and and those strong ties as well um, not always something that you encounter with this kind of character. So for me, that was that was refreshing. At any rate, let me stop rambling at you about relationships and turn to the interview so Veronica can tell you more about the book. Again, it is called As You Look. The author is Veronica Gutierrez. Hi, Veronica. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. We are here to talk about your book, As You Look. Um, before we get to that, though, if you would um, start by sharing a little bit about yourself, I would appreciate it. Sure. Um, I am a, a new author, a debut author. I started writing uh, right after I retired early from a, from a corporation. I had always wanted to write, so was able to put together something that I'd been noodling for, for years um, and um, have put into the book uh, stuff from, I think, my experience in, in life, if you will. Uh, I've, uh, I'm a former community organizer, uh, a former civil rights attorney, uh, former uh, public servant uh, working at the municipal level, and a former uh, corporate executive. So all of those worlds somehow come together and feed little parts of, uh, of my fiction, if you will. I also come from a large family uh, in Boyle Heights, which is a, a part of East Los Angeles, uh, the East Los Angeles neighborhood. Uh, it has a very rich cultural history. And uh, I feature that in, uh, in my book as well. So that plays a big role. Okay, yes, um, that is that is the neighborhood in which the book takes place. Um, not a neighborhood I'm familiar with, so it was fun to get to know mm -hmm. it a little bit. Um, can you uh, give an overview of the story? Sure. It's, uh, it's about a private investigator who uh, happens to be a former uh, LAPD cop, uh, kind of pushed out of the LAPD, who is dealing with the intersection of uh, grief and guilt and uh, nascent psychic tendencies, if you will. Uh, she feels guilty about her mother's uh, death because she had been investigating something uh, that was unrelated to her death, but uh, the perpetrator in a road rage accident was someone that she had been looking for. And, um, and she blames herself. So she has a hard time with the guilt associated with that. And uh, she also has uh, these uh, somewhat hit and miss type of psychic dreams that she doesn't really listen to, does sometimes and tries to ignore because she's a, a private investigator now and she has to deal in facts. And uh, uh, she has to come to terms with all of that when her godson is kidnapped and her wife is stalked and uh, she needs to make sure that uh, she doesn't lose another loved one. Yeah, and can you talk a little bit more about the... Um you know, the abilities or, or however you want to refer to her, her dreams and her feelings. Um, her brother has some similar um, abilities. Can you talk about the, why you wanted to include that element within the story? Sure. Um, it actually um, came about because um, I wanted to make sure that it was a story that had um, a 
a strong relationship. So she actually starts, we actually start with a, with her wife and I wanted her to wake up from a dream. And if she was going to have a dream, talk about it, she had to have a relationship and have someone she could talk to about it right away. Um, and that kind of sparked some of it. But I think uh, a lot of it also comes from, um, from my own life, from the uh, life of people around me who um, have some similar experiences, if you will, not to the extent that I feature in the book, but uh, there are a lot of um, moments in, in not all of our lives where there is certain serendipity, if you will, or certain unexplained things, uh, or, or just uh, uh, luck. And, um, and I wanted to be able to feature that uh, somehow. Um, and because of her resistance, I wanted to have someone on the other side, her brother, who was more accepting of it, of this gift, if you will, uh, even though he's a bit hit and miss as well. Uh, so uh, I wanted to make sure that it wasn't perceived as something that was perfect either, uh, just something that uh, informed her outlook on life and part of her challenge in dealing with the guilt and the grief uh, that she uh, uh, had to deal with because of her mother's death. Mm -hmm. And I also wanted to have something in there um, associated with what is, uh, I think, fairly common in uh, Latino uh, environments, Latino neighborhoods and communities, where you have what, uh, what is called a curandera, a, a healer, a psychic healer, if you will. And uh, that character is actually uh, based on my sister's godmother. And in this instance, she is Yolanda's godmother, um, Doña Mercedes. Um, and I had a, a great deal of fun writing about her. She's a, been a, a tremendous influence on our family growing up. So I wanted to make sure I featured her as well. I'm going to cut in here so we can take our first break of the podcast. But when we come back, Veronica and I will be talking more about the um, the juju or the gut feelings or the prophetic dreams or whatever you want to refer to them as and how those affect Yolanda's character as well as the case and the story. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I'll be right back. Are you tired of the same old news? Are you sick of the seemingly endless political spin and negativity? The GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast is a weekly news podcast covering all the top positive and uplifting news stories. We cover stories that will inspire, uplift, and remind you of the good in the world. Tune into the Golden State Media Concepts America Still Beautiful podcast to get all the great and positive news stories of today. Download the GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast on iTunes. Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. I am speaking today with author Veronica Gutierrez about her first Yolanda Avila detective mystery. This one is called As You Look. Let's go ahead and return now to that interview. Yeah, and it's, it's, an, interesting, um, it's an interesting way to kind of get at some of Yolanda's guilt. The main character's name is Yolanda because, um, you know, we all have gut feelings to, to a certain extent or instinct, but this is a little bit deeper. So it's interesting to watch her struggle with that, you know, because she, she does have the guilt over her mother's death. So um, it really helps to address some of that for her. Right. You know. um, talk a little bit more about Yolanda as the main character. It's told from her perspective for the most part. Um, what about her do you think will resonate with readers? Well, I think um, anyone who likes uh, strong women uh, in uh, in books would probably enjoy it. Uh, I myself really like reading mysteries with uh, featuring strong uh, women investigators or um, uh, you know, officer, police officers, or you know, even in cozy uh, mysteries. As long as the women are strong, I, I I think I tend to gravitate toward them. Um, so that's one thing. Um, I also think that um, one of the things that will help resonate is that Yolanda isn't a typical 
a private investigator. She's not the, you know, the the gumshoe type of a, a hard, hard knocks uh, type of investigator who's dealing with a inner demons, if you will, um, she, that, you know, a, a lot of characters are. Uh, you have a lot of broken characters in the private investigator genre. And, and that's fine because you have, it gives you a lot of room for character development. Uh, but I wanted her to be someone that, you know, you could meet on the street and, uh, and could be a friend, could be a family member. Um, and I also wanted her to have a strong uh, relationship. She has a very strong uh, positive relationship with her wife. And I wanted that to be portrayed as well, because that's not always the case in the LGBTQ community. Um, but it is in the case of a lot of my friends. So I wanted to make sure that that came out. Um, in fact, when I, uh, when I was uh, having uh, the book reviewed a little before it was published, uh, I wanted to run it by several people for different aspects of the book. And one of them was an emergency room doctor because I have some emergency room scenes. And he went off and went on vacation. And when he read the book, he sent me an email uh, as he got into it. He said, I've only read the first chapter so far. And I know this is supposed to be a mystery, but what I'm reading is about a, a private investigator who loves her wife and whose wife loves her. And I'm, I'm loving it. And my first reaction was, oh, wait a minute, this isn't a romance. Uh, but he got it. He got the, the strong relationship part of it. Um, and then uh, helped me with the ER um, scenes. Uh, so, uh, so I'm glad that he liked the book overall and was able to contribute to it. Yeah, absolutely. I was, I was thinking about that as you were, as you were talking a little bit, that often with private investigators, they do have, um, if, you know, if, if it's a woman, she has a complicated relationship with her father, or she has a complication, complicated relationship with her spouse, or often it's an ex-spouse. Um, and so it's, it's kind of nice to see someone that obviously she still has some, some, some issues to work through as we all do, but to have sure. that support system is, is kind of refreshing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I enjoyed writing that part of it. Yeah. Um, and then there are some, there are some portions of the story that are also told from Joey's perspective. He's the six-year-old who goes missing. Can you talk a little mm -hmm. bit about the decision to include those, pers that, that perspective as well? Sure. Um, because the book is written in first person, uh, the scenes where, where he is kidnapped, um, she can't be privy to. Um, so uh, I thought that the only way to do it was to have it done from his perspective. And um, because he's a child, it was a little different um, and more, a little more difficult to write, I thought. Uh, but uh, it also added, I think, a little to the tension uh, in the book. And it was probably, for me, the most difficult part uh, of the book to write just because, you know, it's a kidnapping of a child. Um, and, uh, and it's a, it's a hard thing to be able to deal with. So uh, I, I think that uh, for that reason, and because of the, uh, the point of view um, uh, part of the craft, it, I found it difficult uh, to write, but uh, I, I think that that helped uh, in move the story forward. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's difficult to read sometimes as well, simply because, you know, you, just even from from the uh, everyone's perspective the kidnapping of child is difficult and then that like um not giving anything really away he's kidnapped early in the book and there's just you know he follows a puppy and i'm I, in my head i'm like no 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 you know like you, you start to right. um it, it resonates a little bit right. more right. than it might um so what types of research did you do while writing the book well, um, because the book is based on the neighborhood where I grew up, um, I didn't have to do a whole lot of research regarding the, the geography, if you will, or the neighborhood and the, that community. But um, uh, Sydney, uh, Yolanda's wife, is a NER doctor. And I wanted to make sure that I had um, an authentic uh, representation of, of her job and, and also the ER scene that I, that I have later in the book as well. Um, and, uh, that's and for that per reason, I, uh, uh, talked to uh, a couple of doctors actually. And, uh, one of them was just over cocktails at a party somewhere, um, uh, at a friend's house. And he expressed interest in, in reading the book and, 
you know, you, people say that all the time, you know, don't know if they really want to. And then he kept asking me, well, when's your, when am I going to see your manuscript? So I, I was very appreciative uh, of that. Um, and I also um, met with a private investigator uh, who is a friend of a friend um, to, to learn a little bit more about the kinds of work that private investigators actually do uh, in, in real life, as opposed to the movies, if you will. And uh, the woman happened to be working in the Bradbury building in downtown Los Angeles, which is a very historic building. And for years, as I've been you know, noodling this book, I wanted my character to have an office in that building. I had no idea that this woman was there. So it was, uh, it was just one of those coincidences, if you will, uh, that happened as I was uh, writing the book and coming across things that helped move it forward. Uh, so I really uh, enjoyed speaking with that private investigator, not just about her job, but about the building itself, um, which is a building that uh, that Yolanda is interested in having an office in. Mm-hmm. And then um, how about character development? Do you have a pretty strong idea of your characters before you start? Do they tend to develop more as you write them? How does that work for you in your writing? Um, well, I think both happen, but I like to have a good idea of, of who the characters are because it makes it easier to write, you know, especially dialogue. You know where they're coming from. You have an idea of, of what they're like. So um, in some of the characters I've gone much deeper into than others, uh, but I'll, I'll do things like, you know, write up for myself um, um, biographies, um, of them, you know, what what their childhood was like, who their friends were, uh, what, you know, what motivates them, what are they afraid of, what what are their hopes and dreams, uh, if you will. Uh, And that's, um, that's important to do, I think, um, as a, as a writer. Uh, I don't follow a set pattern, if you will, I, I, more than anything, I get a feeling for the character. And, uh, and I end up liking them uh, quite a bit, but, uh, uh, it's uh, even the, the the bad guys, uh, but it's hard to uh, to make sure that it's all fiction sometimes because you're drawing from from your life, you know, from people you know. So, so some of the characters are composite characters of of people that I that I know and have come across. Um, I don't think folks recognize themselves necessarily in the characters that I've written, uh, but uh, pieces of, of people I know are in there. Uh, and you can't avoid that as a writer, I think. But uh, but yes, I definitely do develop, try to develop the character as much as possible before writing. Uh, in fact, I'm, I'm working on the second book um, because this is a series and um, I'm having a, a Japanese character in, um, in the book, uh, in the second book, and that's going to be a a secondary character, but I want to make sure that it's authentic. So I'm doing a lot of research on that, um, on that particular character. And and I'm I'm almost feeling like I'm getting to know him. So I kind of went through that process with uh, Sydney and Sydney's mother, uh, uh, Yolanda and and, uh, Jesse, her brother uh, and her father as well. Those were all very enjoyable. Time for our second break of the podcast. When we come back, Veronica will be talking a little bit more about some of the characters and that character development. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play.
Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and my interview with author Veronica Gutierrez. I can only imagine for authors that you spend so much time with the characters that they do become fairly real for you as you're writing them and working with them. You're right, they do. You, that, that's why the, the dialogue becomes uh, natural almost. You just you, you know what they're going to say because of mm-hmm. their personalities. Mm-hmm. And actually, you you segued nicely to my next question because this is um, a Yolanda um, Avila mystery. So that made that made me think there's going to be more. Do you have an idea of an over an overall arc for the series, or are you just going to write as long as you have stories for Yolanda? What are you thinking on that? Yeah, I, um, my initial thought was to have um, um, have her work on issues that are raised by her motley crew of friends, if you will. Uh, and uh, I, I still might do that, but I, I think I just want to write until I don't have any more stories. And I, there's just so much to tell. And I, I'm trying to tie some of the um, the history of Boyle Heights uh, into it as well. You know, some, some of my favorite novels are those that feature the, the community uh, as, uh, as an additional character. Uh, in in the book, you know, uh, Sarah Paretsky's uh, V.I. Warshawski novels do that for Chicago. Uh, Kara Black uh, does that with Emma the Duke in Paris. Uh, Cheryl Head uh, does that in her Charlie Mack uh, uh, series in in Detroit, and and there are many many others in San Francisco and uh, writers who focus in L.A. New Orleans, um, and I really gravitate toward those mysteries. So I wanted to make sure that Boyle Heights was a character. So I think as long as there are stories to talk about Boyle Heights, I think uh, I'll I'll keep writing them. Uh, Boyle Heights itself was an entry point for many immigrants in Los Angeles, often the first place they landed um, due to um, real estate um, redlining and and racism and and actually laws that prohibited people from owning property. a lot of uh, immigrants ended up in Boyle Heights before moving to other parts of Los Angeles. So that's part of what's contributed to the rich history there. And I want to be able to depict some of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I know it's a work in progress, but um, is there anything that you can say about the second book without, of course, giving anything away for the first book or, you know, whatever you're comfortable with sharing about the second book? Um well, the, the second book will have um, a character who is a, a survivor of um, a Japanese concentration camp um, in the United States. Uh, that, that's what the, they're called by a, a lot of the Japanese uh, activists. And uh, he was a child at the time, so he's an elderly man in this one. And he will be a secondary character. He'll be an important character um, that uh, the the, the crime will take place in, in Boyle Heights um, and uh, we'll need to explore uh, different elements of um, human character, uh, if you will, um, among uh, many of the characters in the book. Uh, there's a, what I really want to get at in, in that one, and I'm still noodling some of those themes, but um, the capacity for all of us to do good and to do bad, you know, if not evil uh, as well. Um, sometimes there's, uh, you know, we think that we uh, are ethical and and uh, uh, righteous and all sometimes, and, and that's not always the case. If you really look at us, you know, we all have the potential to do things that we're not proud of necessarily. And uh, um, I think that we'll face that in uh, a lot of the characters uh, in in this second novel. All right, thank you for that. I appreciate it. Um, you you said I think I remember you saying that you you kind of always wanted to write. So um, what what was the journey to publication like for you? What made you decide to take that step and decide to write for publication? Well, uh, early retirement for one. Um, <laughs> when I actually had time to to put pen to paper. Uh, I had, like I said, I had been noodling the, the, the book for many years, um, the, the story, just the idea of the story. And when I retired, I thought, you know, oh, I just want to read. So that for the first three to four months, I just read 
every day, most of the day, and I, I loved it. Um, and I thought, you know, I really do need to put this book together. And I have a really good friend who encouraged me to explore the publication process. You know, how do you self-publish a book? So I published a, a, a journal, a blank journal called My Little Black Cocktail Book that helps people write recipes for for their, their cocktails. When they go to a bar, they can pull it out. And the bartenders who are usually very generous with their cocktail recipes can do that. So I had that published as a self published book. And then um, I really wanted to focus on, on writing. And I came across a book by uh, Lisa Cron uh, called Story Genius that focuses on the, the backstory, the, uh, the middle of the book, if you will, the aha moment and, and the ending. And as long as you get those together and the character profiles together, you basically have a uh, a path to to write the entire book. Um, and she teamed up with a woman named Jenny Nash, um, who wrote a book called The uh, uh, Blueprint for a Book. Uh, and before she wrote that, she was doing a lot of workshops for writers that I had the, the fortune of being a part of uh, right in the, the early process. I, I just I was just so lucky to, to come across this. And I got a book coach that Jenny Nash um, trained uh, to to help me move the story forward um, in a lot of ways, and uh, and that was uh, you know one of the best things I, I ever did. I would I would highly recommend that to uh, any writers out there. Get a book coach; uh, they they definitely are worth their weight in gold. Um, and if you know you can't get a book coach, at the very least get you know the Story Genius by Lisa Cron and the uh, uh, Blueprint for a Book by Jenny Nash. Uh, it will definitely help you get started and it will help you help keep you from making uh, mistakes uh, along the way that will save you a lot of time. But that was essentially where, um, where I wrote um, the book. Then I, I sent it to a few agents, you know, I did the, I went through the whole agent solicitation process. Um, and then I got a lot of positive feedback, you know, several requests for the manuscript, but then the agent said, well, you know, this isn't necessarily the book I think I can sell. Um, so I went um, directly to um, the publishers. Um, one publisher held it for quite a while, um, and I think uh, COVID got in the way. So I sent it to another publisher, the publisher you know, Bella Books, and uh, the publisher called me within a week and said, we want to publish your book. So I was thrilled, and, uh, and that's how the book got published. Wonderful. I love it. Um, in addition to you know getting a book coach or or getting the the books that um, you recommended, do you have other advice for people who are thinking that they might want to write? Yeah, I think just just do it. Um, sit down and and budget your time and 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 try to to stick to it. Uh, I was very lucky uh, that I had the time to do this. Um, and I would use my mornings. Uh, I, I established a routine, um, and I was able to get a lot down on paper and I used, you know, a lot of walks that I took to develop characters in my head, develop dialogue in my head. You, as a writer, you, you don't let go of your story uh, just because you're away from the computer. So uh, I would just recommend that uh, you, you set out your goals to get it done and, and then just do it and get it done. Of course, I'm saying that now and I'm trying to motivate myself to work on this second book as I, as, I, as, I, as I say that well you know sometimes the best advice is the advice, the advice we need to give ourselves <laughs> that's right yeah. um. time for the last break of the podcast when we come back Veronica will be talking about what she likes to read so stay tuned you're listening to the GSMC book review podcast and I'll be right back Pets bring such joy to our lives, and the GSMC Pets Podcast is here to share in that joy. We'll tell stories of pets finding their forever homes, acting in unexpected ways, being helpful, or just being silly. Whether you love dogs, cats, llamas, reptiles, fish, or you've never met an animal you didn't like, the GSMC Pets Podcast is for you.
Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and the conclusion of my interview with author Veronica Gutierrez. And then uh, I love I love your your early retirement and three or to four months of solid reading. That sounds heavenly. Um, mm-hmm. Who are your go to authors and genres when you read for yourself? Well, I think I like um, I like mysteries. So the uh, the uh, Sarah Paretsky, uh, Kara Black Showhead, uh, Catherine Forrest, uh, um, and others are are among my favorite uh, authors. Um, uh, trying to think of uh, of others to stuff the hand it's just, there are just so many I, I also like um uh, biographies and uh and and memoirs um uh, historical fiction uh there's a, a an author named uh, carlos ruiz safon who unfortunately passed away uh, i believe last year or the year before uh who writes about a, a series called a cemetery of books and the, uh, the the fourth book in the series, the um, Labyrinth of the Spirits, was one that I really really um, enjoyed. Um, you know, my wife and I both read it and read the entire series. And it's the kind of book where you stop and you say, "Hey, check out this packet passage," you know, as you're reading it. And when you know, a few books do that, so uh, I think I find that really inspiring. Uh, the Elena Ferrante books, uh, based in uh, in uh, Naples, were also quite enjoyable in that way. So uh, very, very interest, but uh, I, I just like to read. Mm-hmm. Do you and your wife tend to have similar tastes in books or do you kind of read and share from your differing tastes? Um, we read and share from our different tastes. She actually prefers short stories. She does a lot of, she, she reads a lot of anthologies. Uh, I prefer longer novels, uh, but uh, but we definitely both share uh share them and, and you know we'll read both but uh, I read more of the novels and she reads more of the anthologies. Mm-hmm. I had, listeners to, to this podcast will know that my long and enduring struggle with short stories I, um, I just want more I always, if, if, I, uh, if I love a character I just want more so I really struggle with short stories. Yeah, yeah. Roxane Gay um, edited a, a, a great one called the I think American Short Stories I can't remember and she she made a a great selection of uh, of authors uh, for that anthology. It's a very good one. Mm, nice. Um, so, um, in terms of internet presence, website, and any social media that you're active on. Sure. Um, the on social media, um, I'm on uh, Instagram, uh, Twitter, and Facebook. Uh, and all of those links can be found at my website, which is Veronica Gutierrez dot com that's uh veronica gutierrez is spelled g-u-t-i-e-r-r-e-z uh, dot com and all the links are there as well i probably don't do as much social media as i should but um but you'll see me on on twitter and instagram and facebook from time to time all right thank you Veronica, we've talked about the book and we've talked about um, uh, several different things during our time together, but is there anything that we haven't covered that you would like to mention at this time about um, the book or writing or anything at all? Um, I think um, I, I want to mention the, uh, uh, the gratitude to, uh, to readers. Um, one of the best experiences that I've had as I've gone through this process is coming across readers who really like the book and just really help promote it. They go on social media and do it themselves on their own. Um, and, uh, and I really have, uh, have been uh, pleasantly surprised and feel very gratified for that. Um, and I'm also really grateful to folks like you, um, Sarah, who do the, uh, the podcast. Uh, you guys are all great uh, fans of, uh, of literature, of, of writers as well. Uh, so uh, thank you to you for uh, the work that you're doing and getting as much information out there for us on um, on what's coming up and what's already there and what we should be reading. So thank yeah. you. Oh, you're welcome. And um, yeah, I love I love getting to know debut authors, especially because I doing the podcast. I've I've discovered so many authors that I may never have have come across without without this. So it's fun. Excellent. Um, well, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate you um, talking to me about the book and writing. Um, thank you so much. Thank you. 
Thank you once again to Veronica for joining me to talk about this first in the Yolanda Avila detective mystery series. Um, looking forward to more from this character. As I said at the beginning, um, strong female character, strong relationships. Um, I, I really appreciated this particular private investigator story character, etc. If you're a fan of this genre um, of private investigators of female private investigators of strong women characters um mysteries detectives etc etc then you should definitely check out this book and you might have just found yourself a new series to follow and enjoy i'm also um, looking forward to seeing how veronica develops as a character throughout the series how um, her relationships continue to evolve etc so definitely check out this book and then other um, Yolanda Avila mysteries as they come out as well hope that you will join me next time when um, I will be joined by Ariane Torres Um, we will be talking about her debut novel it is called We Are the Kings and um, it is Uh, It's a generational story. It's a story of strong women and relationships, and you're just going to have to tune in to find out more about that particular story, um, or novel, excuse me. So that will be on the next episode. In the meantime, as always, if you are a fan of this podcast, you know what I'm going to ask you to do next. If you haven't done so already, please um, like, follow, subscribe, etc. so you can get all the podcasts when they come out, uh, so you know when new podcasts come out. Follow us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. And if you haven't done so already and are so inclined, please do leave a review, written or starred. Either way, it really helps us to get the podcast out to more listeners such as yourself. Uh, listeners who love books, um, which are really the best kind of listeners, right? Podcast listeners who love books we're the best. (laughs) You're the best. And I very much appreciate you. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you're having a wonderful week so far and I will talk to you next time. But in the meantime, I hope that your week as always involves plenty of time for you to get yourself lost in as many good books as you can find time for. Thank you. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from Move to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program